Video number seven in Microsoft Excel for Beginners. Uh, in this section, we're going, or in this lesson, we're going to talk about two sections of the ribbon. We're going to talk about the font section here and also the alignment section. Um, both of these sections contain very popular tools that you'll find yourself going to all the time. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the font section. Uh, I've gone ahead and taken the liberty to plug in some excellent information here. And um, if you notice in the toolbar up here in these two sections, you'll see, especially in this version of Office that I'm using, Office uh, 2013, um, certain, certain buttons are already highlighted. Notice the B is highlighted. That means bold. Uh, that means our text is currently in bold. Uh, if we hover above our alignment button, this says it's currently aligned to the left. And if we hover above this one, it says currently aligned to the bottom. Um, so guess what? With these buttons, you can change a lot of things. Uh, but this cell selected, I'm going to go up here and uncheck the bold. And notice that the font just goes right back to regular text. Again, I want to put it back to bold. Uh, the I means italicized. Just by clicking on it, you can make the font italicized. Uh, you can also underline it if you'd like to. Kind of cool. Um, you can even put a double underline if you want to. Notice how the drop down there. Underline, double underline. And again, to remove it, just, double, just click on it again, and it's like a toggle. On and off. Um, now, there is a difference between underline the text and underlining the cell. And that's what this next box means. It's called the border button. And currently we're on, we have a bottom border. Um, actually that is the default, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And I'm gonna click away from my cell and notice now how our cell is underlined all the way across from the beginning to the end of where column A starts and ends. I can shrink the column up and the, the, board, the underlined border stays the same. And again, with the cell selected, I'm going to click the drop down beside the border and look at all your choices. Um, we currently have a bottom border. Uh, if I wanted to change that to a top border only, or let's, let's say a right border, I can click that and click away. And it, it's added both a bottom and a right border. Um, you can also say no border. If you want to get rid of all your borders, click no border. That does away with it. I'll tell you what, let me come over here to a cell here. I think it will make a little bit more sense. Uh, let's go and let's do a thick box border. And click away and notice what that does. It, it outlines the, the whole cell. Uh, let's get rid of that, no border. Now let's select multiple cells. And let's come to border. And we can come down and say all borders. And what this will do is it'll place a border around every single cell. That's a quick way to create a grid. Uh, if you're displaying numbers or whatever you're trying to display, perhaps in a table format. Real quickly using that uh, border control, you can create a grid. Again, let's get rid of those borders. And again, there, there's, there's, there's tons of borders here. I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, some of the ones that I use a lot is the double border bottom. Uh, that's good for when you're adding up information. Uh, a lot of times I'll put my total right up underneath a double border on the bottom. Uh, that that's uh, that's a, that's one I use quite a bit. Um, so again, that's the border tool. Um, let's move on next to the font um, color. This is called the fill color, and you guess it if you click on it, it'll color the background of the cell. Um, and again, if you click the drop down, you'll see your palette. Uh, and as you hover above each color, notice in the background that it go ahead and it gives you a preview of what that color will look like. I kind of like that color there. So that's the background. And of course, the next button is obviously the font. And again, I can hover above these colors and um, it'll give me a preview. I kind of like that yellow. Uh, let's go with, that's kind of orange in it. We'll go with that one. That's kind of cool. So just real quickly, I'm able to add a little style um, to my 
normally black and white spreadsheet. Now notice that also up here it says Calibre. That is currently the font that I have selected. I can click this drop down and as you can see there's a ton of fonts here to choose from. Uh, these are automatically built into Windows when you install Microsoft Office. Uh, I'm just going to pick one randomly here. Modern number 20. And the number out to the right of it is the font size. And again, I can come down and I can select small font or I can go to 48, 72. This is really big. Uh, a little too big for me. Let's see. Let's go back to 22 and let's leave it there. Um, so that's one way to, to, to change the font size. Another way is to incrementally bump them up and down. So I can click this up arrow and this will slowly increment uh, the font size. And of course the next button to the right will decrease it. So it, it allows you to make small changes to get it just like you want. Um, so pretty much that's, that's the font section. The next section I want to talk to you about is the alignment section, this section here. Now currently you can see that we're left justified. Um, I can click the center and it'll center the text across the cell. And it doesn't matter how, how big the cell is, I can widen this out if I want to. And it'll automatically center it based on the width. And of course I can always right justify as well and that will bump everything over to the right. Now, let's pretend that we want to left justify this, but it's not quite where we want it to be. We would like to budge it over to the right a little bit. I want to click these buttons right here called increase or decrease indent. And I want to say, I want to increase this just a couple of times. Let's go three times. So what that does is it slowly bumps it over away from the left side of the cell. And that's kind of cool because, and actually I think these are new features um, just coming out with Microsoft Office 2013. These may not be available in earlier versions of Excel, so just keep that in mind. But that's pretty cool. I have had a, um, a need for that occasionally in the past where I didn't like it centered, I didn't like it left justified. If I could have just bumped it over a little bit, that would be really cool. And now they've made that feature available. So uh, that kind of covers this bottom row here. Let's talk about the top row. Uh, this is the top alignment, middle alignment, and bottom alignment. And that may not make much sense to you, but if you can, if you came to your row, and just like your column headings where you can shrink those, you can also expand your row height. So I'm going to grab the, the border between my two cells, and I'm going to stretch this down. And notice that by default, Excel puts the text along the bottom and as you can see here that's what's highlighted but we could also center it vertically by clicking this button and that moves it to the center or we can move it to the top by clicking that button so that's pretty cool there as well I've restored the screen back to where it was and I wanted to talk about control Z a lot of times you, you may make a mistake if you enter some text accidentally or perhaps you grab something and drug it to where it didn't need to be. You could always hit the control Z button and that will undo your previous actions. And I can continue to hit control Z until I'm back to my original state that I want to be at. A control Z is undo and that's the same as going up to the toolbar up here at the very top of your screen and undoing there as well. But I found that over time control Z keyboard shortcut is much, much faster. Okay. So that's enough about alignment. Let's let's come down and let's apply. Uh, I, I do want to talk about these other ones real quickly. Um, this is the merge and center, and this one up here is the wrap text. We'll we'll cover that next. Let's uh, let's take what we've learned and let's let's apply it to these uh, these two pieces of information here. Um, these are two sections of of, of sales reps, and this is region one. Uh, it shows the person's name. Uh, the month of their sales and obviously the amount of their sales and it just happens to be identical the number but that's just my copying down let's let's format these sections using the using the new tools that we discovered uh, first of all let's grab our column headings and let's make these stand out by making them bold 
Okay, that looks good. Now let's let's underline them. Let's let's put a nice little bold, uh, thick bottom border. That's what I'm going to select. And notice how I've highlighted the three columns. Um, so I'm going to highlight those and then click the thick bottom border. And I can click away, and we can see that that makes it stand out a lot clearer. Um, but let's let's look at this region one here. Uh, this really covers all three of these columns. It would be cool. Yeah, we could move it over here, and that makes a little more sense. But what would really be cool is if we could align this font or this this text across all three columns. Well, guess what? We sure can. We can go ahead and select the cell. And we can drag with our mouse over the, the columns that we want to spread this on. And then we can come up here to this box here that's called Merge and Center. And we can click it and watch what happens. It automatically merges these three cells into one. And it centers them across all three columns. And to really make that stand out, why don't we change the background color to, say, a light blue. Okay, that looks cool. That looks really good. And to really make it pop out, why don't we grab the whole section here, we'll come back to our border, and let's do a thick box border around the whole thing. Okay, that looks really good. Um, let's take our sales and let's convert these to dollars, and we, we've done this in a previous video. I'm going to convert that to dollars, that looks good. Now, numbers are always right justified. Sales by default is text and it's left justified. So let's right justify this column. There we go. And why don't we take the whole column of, of the month and let's center those. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we'll leave salesperson as it is. That looks that looks decent as well. Um, so now we want to do the same for the bottom section. Well, I could go through all those steps again, but I'm going to show you a real quick shortcut. All you want to do is go ahead and highlight what you would like to copy in terms of formatting and come up here to the far left hand side. There's a little paintbrush and if you hover your mouse above it, it'll say format painter. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to come back over here and notice how my cursor has changed. I now want to highlight the area that I'd like to paste into and watch what happens when I release the mouse button. Voila, it automatically applies the same formatting that we had in the top section to the bottom section. And the only thing I want to do differently is I'll go ahead and select this cell here and I'll change the color to, let's say, green. So real quickly, we can easily establish our Region 1 salespeople and our Region 2 salespeople just by using these wonderful formatting tools that Excel gave us. That's it for now. Uh, I'll catch you guys next time.